wonderful car. It looks as if it had won the Grand Prix d'Elegance many years ago. Oh, it did. It was built for Oroposo, you know, the bullfighter. He had it made this way so he could stand up and take bows. He only got one ride and never bequeathed it to me on his deathbed. Well, here's to Oroposo. I hope you like champagne. You mean it's yours? Well, I gave it to my former chauffeur, the fat bandit in the front seat. Harry, look at that wonderful villa. Well, that was Bertie Crampton's. Oh, you mean Lord Crampton in Gloucestershire? Huh. His family acres marched hand in hand with ours. Gloucestershire, the cathedral town, trout fishing, garden parties. What a beautiful life. <laughs> you know England well? Emotionally, I am English. I serve tea every afternoon with crumpets. And I've always kept up my subscription to country life and the tedla. Trouble with England, it's all pomp and no circumstance. You're very wise to get out of it. Escape while you can. Well, I'd hardly describe myself as escaping. It simply so happened that a relative of mine, first cousin actually, who died recently, happened to be the owner of a coffee plantation. Africa's the place now. You talk about the diamond boys, the gold boys. They just skimmed a little off the top. The potential mineral wealth of Africa's hardly been scratched. Now, there is a villa. Mm, big. Well, that's the Villa Capriccio, famed in song and story, a three-star attraction in Baydecker. Well, whose is it? Well, the bank's on it now. It used to be mine. Yours? Yes, I brought old Charles over from Fouquet's, you know, the old Fouquet's, to run it for me. Then when I decided to pull up stakes, I bought him this restaurant we're going to. Least I could do to show my appreciation. Well, here we are. Charles! Charles! Wait here a minute while I route old Charles out. He doesn't even know we're in this neck of the woods. Charles! Charles! She must think we're extraordinarily naive. Oh. Knew all those people. Owned that vast villa. Oh. Bought this place because he liked the fellow's cooking. What utter ball to death. Oh, perhaps he did. I beg leave to doubt it. Did you notice his wife? She seemed to be a rather sensitive little woman. Really embarrassed by all that rot. I am sorry, Signore. As you see, we are closed. We do not open for another two months. John, what the devil's going on here? This place is falling to rack and ruin. The place is closed. We shall have to die in the hotel after all. Monsieur Don. <laughs> Monsieur, Monsieur Don. <laughs> Madame, why did you not let me know you were coming? You did not say you were with Monsieur Don. <laughs> Nothing is close to Monsieur Don. Good to see you again, Charles. It's been too long, Monsieur Don. Not since the night you left the villa. <laughs> Remember your farewell party. I've tried ever since to forget it. Remember how in the morning we escorted you to the train with violins playing and everybody cried like when a king you love very much leaves his country. <laughs> Aren't you dressed yet? Do I appear to be dressed? Do dress, do hurry. It's the most wonderful day. And Billy wants us to drive out and see his villa. Uh, his former villa. <laughs> Obviously I can't go. I've got a chill on my liver. What a miserable place to be ill. And you forgot to pack my hot water bottle. You packed it. Gwendolyn, I distinctly remember. Hello. Oh, hello. No, I'm afraid we can't. Harry has this wretched chill uh, and... Give me the telephone. Chelm here. Yes. Quite. Absolutely. A hot water bottle. That's very, very good of you, old boy. Uh, look here, Dan Rodder. Would you mind very much if my wife went alone? <laughs> she enjoys this sightseeing sort of stuff, you know. <laughs> Splendid. Splendid. I'll send her along. You know, Gwendolyn, nowadays, one simply cannot afford to dismiss people just because they're not one's sort. One has to try and bridge the gulf. After all, it's a new world we're going into. One's got to take it as one finds it. Face it. Use it. Master it. Americans on the street, in, in the cinema, of course, but I, I've never talked to one before. Are you a typical American? I think it's important that I should know. 
Why important? There are two good reasons for falling in love. One is that the object of your affections is unlike anyone else. A rare spirit, such as Lord Byron. The other is that he's like everybody else, only superior. Harry, for instance, is the very best of a type. Well, if you must know, I'm a typical rare spirit. How long did you live here? Well, the longest I've ever lived anywhere is two years. But when you were a child, didn't you ever have a mother and a father? And a house and a street and a town? No, I, uh, I was an orphan until I was 20, and then a rich and beautiful lady adopted me. You know, I've changed my mind about your being an evil doctor. You're off to keep a rendezvous someplace in Africa sacred to the tribesmen. You're going to found a new empire and make yourself master of the riches of the world. But you need a beautiful blonde queen to impress the natives as, uh, as the incarnation of the Queen of Sheba. That's why you're making a pass at me. Am I? Of course. I don't generally go sightseeing with strange men. You don't believe that, do you? Well, I believe anything you say. Do you? Well, you shouldn't, you know. You really shouldn't. Mr. Chen. Yes? I, Mrs. Dalrosa, Maria. Oh, come in. Tea for two and two for tea? <laughs> now, that's most awfully kind of you. You shouldn't have troubled, really. Billy told me you had a chill. Bit of one on the liver. Two tasks. Milk, of course. Of course. I feel I should like somehow to do him a good turn of some kind. You do? Well, naturally. Oh, I see. Naturally. I think it would be nice if... if you were able to do something for him. Help him along. Give him the benefit of your advice. Delighted, of course. For instance... Oh, something with business. He was very pleased with that tip you gave him on the way home last night about the gold shares. I've forgotten what I told him. What was it? <laughs> I don't remember either. I was listening to your voice. I wasn't listening to what you said. You see, if you were helping him, it would be so much easier for us to be together a lot out there in Africa. Was he any head for business? Why, well, he's simply brilliant. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought it. But of course he is. You don't suppose I'd marry a ninny, do you? If you imagine that Harry's simply going to Africa to plant coffee, you're very much mistaken. In point of fact, in point of fact, coffee is the least of Harry's interests. In point of fact, the land he's acquiring is extremely rich in certain minerals. Minerals which are indispensable to the production of atomic energy. Harry's land simply teems with uranium. Wouldn't surprise me to see him become the uranium king. So you see, my husband isn't such a ninny as you may have imagined. It might very well be worth your while to go in with him. The potential mineral wealth of Africa has hardly been scratched. Well, I was telling you last night. Well, of course. It's a well-known fact. <laughs> Billy boy. Had a happy day? Very. I'm so glad. What an attractive woman Mrs. Chelm is. Is that what you call me over to tell me? Who are the Chelms? They're English, going out to British East. They have a coffee plantation. Any money in coffee? No, but there's a type of Englishman goes off to coffee plantations without caring whether there's any money in it or not. Relatives leave them coffee plantations and they go out to them. But why this sudden interest in the channel? I'd just like to know who's making friends with my friends. Well, now you know. <laughs> 